Hey everybody, welcome to another look at the Procreate 5 beta. Uh, here we're going to talk about animation assist, and let's just get right into it. Okay, so I think one of the main things that everyone has been waiting to see in Procreate 5 is the animation assist tool. Now, you've probably seen other people demo it at this point, um, and so I'm not going to demo it. I mean, I'm not an animator, so I'm just going to quickly show you how it works. Maybe I happen to be the only channel you follow that does Procreate stuff, so might as well go through it. Um, if you want to see more examples of this, there's probably people out there who have done elaborate videos or animators who have already done some pretty elaborate things. So let's go ahead and just look at what I can show you and then we'll go from there. So first we have to turn it on. So you go here to your little wrench and then you can see in the preferences section which I'm tapping on right there we've got animation assist at the bottom of this list of toggles. So I'll just toggle it on. Boop. Okay you can see down here at the bottom I've got a bar, a timeline basically and you can see over here in my layers I just have the background color layer and then I have an empty layer right there. So how does this work? Let's go to something that's a little bit more of a standard brush. Um, let's do, yeah sure this, that's fine, just like a pencil. So if I draw something, so I'll just do that, you can see it's on that layer and then I can either create a new layer like I normally do here in the layers or I can come down here and press this little plus button and it gives me a new layer. You can see now I have a new layer duplicated it because I held it actually here. Hold on. So if I just tap it, there you go, create a new one. So if I, as you can see there, if I hold it, it duplicates it, which is obviously very helpful depending on the type of animation that you're doing. So let's just go ahead and create a completely new one just by tapping it so you can see it's empty. And then I do another circle and then I do it, add another one, another circle, do it again, another circle, just random shit right now. But you can see that I can see all of my layers that I've done. And the reason you can see that is because when we tap here into the settings, you can see all of the settings for your animation, or at the very least, all of the settings that Procreate provides to support animation. So we've got frames per second, we have onion skin frames, we have onion skin opacity, we have blend primary frame, and then down at the bottom we have sort of how you're going to view the playback of your animation. So frames per second, frames per second is sort of how most people understand it. I think everybody uh, at the, who would be watching this probably understands it, but basically it's how many frames run in one second of, of your animation. So if you set it to one, then each second is just one frame. If you set it to 30, in that one second, 30 frames go by, which, which is really high. Uh, that's a really high setting. So you can see here that the default that they go with is 15. So if I were to hit play, let's hit play real quick on this. Do, 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 that's what that does, okay? So I haven't drawn 15 frames, so I actually have like less than a second's worth of animation based on my current settings, which is why it runs through so crazy fast and it's all like weird and stuff. So if we look at onion skin frames, well, we don't really need to adjust the frames per second right now. Actually, let's, fuck it, let's do it. Let's go down to four, play. And you can see what that does there. And of course, if I were to make it crazy high, it goes all the way up to 60 it goes insanely fast. So let's put it back to 15 for now, just because why not leave things default for the explanation. So the 12 onion skin frames, that's how many of the layers back sort of like through you can see. Um, in fact, I think it is even how many you see in the forward. Yes, okay. So it's how many layers that you see both under and on top of the layer that you're currently working on, which if you think of it in terms of the timeline, that is what comes in the earlier part of the animation versus what comes in the later part of the animation. If you're an animator, this is not anything new to you. This is totally standard. So what we can do with this is we can adjust it. So if I turn it up, obviously nothing's going to change. Oh, it says max. I wonder what max is. I guess max layers, how many layers you have in your Procreate file. Um, if you turn it down, you can see it'll start to disappear. There you go. So right now we've got none. So you're only seeing the active layer that you have. So if I create, if I tap on these and create like a new one, you can see there. But then when I start turning on the onion frames again, the onion skin, sorry, 
boop, 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 boop. And that's obviously if you want to see sort of like where you came from, where you're going when you're doing the in-betweens between some keyframes, or if you're just trying to make sure that from keyframe to keyframe everything makes sense. So if you're not an animator, that's what these are used for. If you are an animator, you already get it. So moving on. Uh, onion skin opacity is just simply how well do you want to see those? Do you want them to be extremely prominent? Like the exact same opacity as what you're working on, which I assume most people would not ever really need, but it's there in case for some reason you're trying to get something to work like that. Um, or much lighter, so you can just get an impression of where you've gone or where you're going. Um, as opposed to uh, more standard right there, which is just a little darker so that you can see the entirety of the thing. Back to settings, blend primary frame. This is easier to see if I'm using solids, but basically what it does is it, it creates a blend mode between the layer that you're on and the previous layers. So like if I were to create a new layer, and let's do something that's more of a color just so it's a little clearer. And it's not doing it correctly. That's strange. Why is it not doing it? Oh no, it is doing it. It's just super subtle. You can see right there, there's a blending happening. Let's uh... Yeah. And there's uh, probably just some reasons behind that, like if you're trying to line certain things up, I don't know, but that's, that's there. So if I were to turn this off, you see it becomes opaque, and then here it blends. That's all that's for. And then lastly, the bottom is the playback. So if I zoom back out again, let's zoom out, and turn on the playback. So if I just play it, it's on loop right now. So it'll go from the first frame to the last frame and then start back at the first frame to the last frame and just run that way. Or you can set it to be a one shot where it just plays through and then stops. Just that simple. Or a ping pong where it goes from the first frame to the last frame and then runs back through all those frames in reverse order to the first and then all the way back again to the last like Boomerang does on uh, like social media apps and stuff like that. So you can see right there. Wow, this is a really good animation, isn't it? So um, that's the that's basically everything that happens down here in your timeline, and you know each one of these spots where it sort of snaps to is a layer that you have. If you go into the middle, like say here, and you create a new layer, then it creates a new snap in the middle. I mean, a new well, a new snap as far as the timeline snaps to it, but it creates a new frame in your bar. Now it doesn't visualize those frames on the bar. So if that's something that you want that's just not provided yet, um, that's more, I guess, how you just think of your layer stack. So speaking of your layer stack, if we create a new layer over here, and let's just create like a big wavy line. Actually, let's make that a different color just so that we have it. Oh my god, I made it practically red. Okay, green, good. If you tap on this layer now, when you're in Animation Assist, you get a new option, which all the way at the bottom there is Animation Foreground. If you tap on that, boop, it'll make this, the animation foreground, not a new layer. So when you hit play, it doesn't count itself as part of your frames of animation. It stays locked on top. And then if you go to the bottom, and let's just create one there, I don't know, yellow, and just create like a lot so that it's like really obvious. And we tap on that, and we switch it to animation background which you should see as the bottom option right there now when we hit play that doesn't move either and all of our layers of animation exist between those two places uh, which is really cool now I'm not an animator I'm working right now at the usual resolutions that I set things which gets me let's see here canvas canvas information it gets me 58 layers. If you're an animator, 58 layers is not a lot, right? Um, so I'm assuming that over time, as these devices get stronger, this will become more and more of a viable option for animators. Also, you can work at a smaller resolution, of course. Um, I also was messing around with some other things, shall we say, um, trying to figure out how to get this to work for somebody like myself. Uh, I'm not an animator, but I might want to do something that is more animation driven, like something subtle maybe. 
Uh, so I was thinking about the idea of if you have a Procreate file, let's go over here to some nonsense that I was messing around with. So this is a Procreate file that's like individual layers that have been imported from another Procreate file. So what I did was in that other Procreate file, I would just create the changes and then I would import them in here as frames. And now I only barely started messing with this. There's going to be a lot more that we'll be able to do with these types of things. But I think for somebody like me who maybe isn't going to do big elaborate animations, maybe I could just do subtle things to bring my animations to life. So by using that sort of playing with like this file and importing it into this file and that file, I feel like I can start stringing together some somewhat interesting things, uh, but we'll sort of see. For right now, I just have this really, really bad half eye closing animation. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of amazing. So anyways, um, that's it for the animation tool. Uh, it's called Animation Assist. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this somewhat deeper dive than um, what you may see elsewhere. Uh, I highly recommend you go out there and you find animators that are taking advantage of this because I think we're going to see some really, really cool stuff. Procreate has already opened up the floodgates for everything from amateurs who never thought that they were going to be able to produce the type of work that they now produce all the way up to professionals who are able to produce different work and show things about their work and uh, do work in places that they never thought they could and now we're getting to where animation is becoming a bigger part of this so as the iPads get more and more powerful then we're going to be seeing some really cool stuff down the line so thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the deeper dive on the animation assist and if you're looking for me on the internet these are the places where you can find me